Ranged is an underappreciated skill. Players look at how long it takes to train and how little it helps them, and most of them don't level up past 60. In my opinion, range is one of the coolest skills in RuneScape Classic, and it's probably my favorite RC skill overall. I think range gets a bad rap in RC for several reasons. It's lacking in equipment and bonuses. It seems weak compared to magic, which can be more accurate and deadly. It can't be used while in combat, and it's hard or boring to train. Ranged is a very useful skill in two key areas, PvP and PvM. Ranged can be absolutely deadly in the wilderness, even if the opponent has full room, especially with multiple rangers. Ranged to aging in RC, when done right, is an easy way to get a KO. High level monster kills, except KBD, can go much faster with a ranger or two. You sometimes won't get the loot, but it pays for itself in the end. I was inspired to make this guide when I learned that some people really have no idea where to train ranged at certain levels, so a good chunk of this guide will be going over training locations from 1 to 9 9. I'll also leave you with some general ranged advice and tips, comparison between the different ammo types, some lore, and common myths. Let's jump in! A quick forward. I'm not a ranged expert. So don't expect this guide to contain every good spot that exists. It may even exclude a few training spots you would consider obvious. I chose the ones that have helped me the most over the years. If you'd like, feel free to add your favorite spots in the comments, that way the viewers have even more options. There are three versions of RSC that I play or played. Official, Vanilla, and Preservation. Ranged accuracy and functionality, as well as NPC defense, varies between all three. So some spots may not work as good on some servers as they do on others. Most of these spots are used in official, and because neither vanilla nor preservation have ranged 100%, I can't guarantee that all of these spots will work. Training spots. There are tons of great training spots in both free-to-play and pay-to-play lands. I'll define a few level brackets, and for each bracket I'll give you what I think is the best spot for experience per hour, the best spot for making money, and other good runner-up spots. A change of scenery is very useful when training ranged, as with many other RSC skills, so be sure to switch up your training spot often. 1 to 25. Best experience is Gnome Troops. The Gnome Troop is a level 3 NPC that can be found on the Khazard battlefield. There are tons of them. I like to go on the west side of the sack and range the ones to the north and east. If you're trying to not get melee XP, do be careful to only attack gnomes you can currently safe spot. Second best experience, chickens. Chickens are a great training spot for low levels, especially if you need feathers, though I don't recommend them after level 25. At that point, the experience just slows down too much compared to the other options. I recommend the Champions Guild. It's generally where I get 1 to 20 range on every account I make. The Champs Guild can be a bit tough if the door is open and you don't have Champions Guild access, but if you focus, eventually the chickens that aren't outside will be in range, and then you just need to attack them quickly before they walk away. 25 to 40. Best experience, still gnome troops. No shocker, these are pretty good experience even after 40. Second best experience, monks or dungeon rats. Monks are a decent place to train ranged once you get past 25 to 30. Dungeon rats may be slightly better, but your range is so low at this point that you might just hit a ton of zeros. I can't really recommend dungeon rats with lower than 35 ranged for this reason. Best drops, barbarians. Barbarians aren't great before 40 ranged, but if for some reason you really need to start earning money with low ranged, they drop some good runes and also have access to the rare drop table. So you could technically get a rune spear or shield left half if our Jesus provides. Honorable mentions, guards in Edgeville. This is actually a place I used to train in RS2 a ton, but it works well in RC2. You'll need to keep going in and out of the building to attack the guards that spawn on the other side of the gate. Forty to sixty. Now we start to get to the cream of the crop for range training. Best experience: dungeon rats. This is absolutely where you should train range, starting at forty. Gnome troops at this point are still good, but they require too much clicking, in my opinion. You can jam out ranged all the way to sixty here, or switch spots to one of the other options I'll discuss in a bit. You can sometimes range goblins here too to get bronze spear drops if you're into that. Keep in mind, you realistically won't be able to ever pick up your arrows here. Well, you could but it would cut into your range XP per hour significantly. Second best experience, Pirates. Okay, here's an extremely underrated and perhaps even unknown range training spot. You'll need an alt for this. Ideally, create an account with 30 plus defense but low attack and strength, and get its thieving level to 39. 
Now, take your account training ranged and the defense alt to pirate's hideout in Member's Wilderness. Put your alt one tile east of the most eastern treasure chest, like shown on screen. On your ranged account, stand outside the building right outside the window, but on the same horizontal tile set as your alt. Range away. This place is not only good for experience, but for the drops too. You have a decent chance of hitting the rare drop table as well, so who knows, maybe you'll get a shield left half for rune spear. You do have peak hairs to worry about, well, kinda, so I usually take a small stack of bronze arrows. You can even trade with your alt through the window. Good luck getting the alt free for 10 seconds though. Third best experience? Dark wizards. Specifically, head to the ones in the wilderness. That way, I can PK you there. These are potentially better experience than pirates from 40 to 50 ranged. They have great rune drops, and you can safe spot them from behind this tree trunk. Best drops? Hobgoblins. The hobgoblins on the peninsula west of the crafting guild are great experience and great drops. If you don't have telekinetic grab or can't afford to use a bunch of laws, but you want to keep the drops, you'll want to use an alt. Essentially, you want an alt character on the peninsula with medium to high defense, at least 30, but 40 plus is perfect, and ideally low attack and strength. The alt will pick up your drops and tank the hobgoblins. You can even trade between the accounts if you get close enough. If you favor wealth more than experience, equip a weapon on the alt to kill the hobgoblins faster. Honorable mentions. If you need a change of scenery, I can recommend these. Barbarians, Monks, Guards in Edgeville, or the Port Serum Jail, which in my opinion is a classic. 60 to 70. Now we start getting into the higher level NPCs, and we see much higher drop potential. Best experience, Pirates. If you skip the part of the video where I went through the 40 to 60 bracket, go back to where I mentioned these guys. Anyway, pirates, as far as I can tell, are very, very fast. At 71 range, I can get 20 to 24,000 per hour. Second best experience, Khazard troops, Ardun dogs, dungeon rats, or ogres. I really am not sure which of these will give you the best experience per hour, but at this bracket, they're all pretty good. I would personally pick Khazard troops or Ardun dogs, as neither have a quest requirement, and at this point, with dungeon rats, your range level is so high you might just sit outside the cage waiting for spawns. I've had this experience in RCP with 71 range, and it just feels like a big waste of time. Ogres are also good, but they're much better 70+. plus. You need to complete Biohazard to gain access to them. Here's a good tip for Ogres. Have an alt that also has Biohazard completed, enter the cage, and pick up your arrows. The alt can also bury the big bones for prayer XP. Best drops. You want drops? I got you. Head to the wilderness, we'll be fighting demons. For lower levels in this bracket, I recommend lessers, but graders are also doable. For lessers, head to the entrance of KBD's lair, about level 38 wilderness. If you are low HP or defense, you might want an alt to pick up the drops. Anyway, range the NPCs from outside the fence. At 70 range, I crush these guys. Stay here a while and you'll get a lot of fires and rune beds. For graders, head to the far northeast section of free to play wilderness and you'll find two. You can range them from behind the walls and columns. Careful though, they have different walk radiuses, so you aren't safe from both of them in some spots. You could easily grind out a rune large here in less than 50 kills. 70 to 99. The final stretch. These spots should keep you really occupied and get you some great experience. Best experience? I don't have much exposure in this territory as the highest range level I've gotten in RSC is 77, so I don't know what the best experience is, but if I had to rank them by this, it would probably be... Pirates. Yeah, that's right. I'm sold on pirates. Maybe after 80 range, it's not that great anymore, but like I said before, I'm getting somewhere around 24,000 experience per hour here at 71 range in RSCP, and it's very good. Undead Ones. I think this is a highly underrated range training spot because the Undead Ones have such low defense. They have 50 defense and 59 HP. Compare that to Ogres, who have 70 defense and 60 HP. It's a no-brainer to train here. Unfortunately, you'll need to complete the Shiloh Village quest to unlock this training spot. If you can bring higher tier ammo, like Mithril or better, levels will go very fast. Khazar Troops It's possible to safe spot these guys from the bridge. Just keep ranging them and setting up kill after kill. This was way better than Ogres in RCP, but no idea how the two compare in official as I never trained here back then. Ogres At these levels, they're definitely some of the best experience you can get. Ardun Dogs Still good, but not as good as Ogres. This one's tough, because they weren't as good as Ogres and Official at these levels, but could very well be better in RSC Press and Vanilla. I suggest you try both and compare your experience per hour for each. Dungeon Rats. Honestly, they could potentially be a little higher on this list. 
I think it depends on their respawn rate. I have no idea what it was in official, but for RSCP at least, they just respawn too slow. Best drops. So you want real dough. Well, let's go over your options. Black Dragons. I actually recommend these guys more for 80 plus ranged, but you can kill them at 70 plus. Just be prepared to lose some arrow piles. Or if you can cast Teleconnect Grab, bring that, because you're gonna hit a lot of zeros. You need decent HP and defense levels to make it to this spot, and I recommend high defense and full rune, or 37 prayer, to tank the dragons in case they attack you. In Taverly Dungeon, there are two black dragon spawns. You can safe spout these guys from across the stalagmites. As I mentioned with greater demons, be careful as they may have different walk radiuses. Not all spots will be safe from both of them, so be prepared to walk back. Bring an anti-dragon fire shield, a few range pots, and the best arrows you got. Side note. If you have a cannon and enough cannonballs to last a while, you can also try the Black Dragons the Love Maze, although you'll have to melee them a bit to finish the kills. No safe spot here. This is honestly great range experience and amazing loot, at the cost of your time and effort making those cannonballs though. Fire Giants. You will need to complete the Waterfall quest first. After entering the Waterfall dungeon, head to your left, west, through the corridor and into the room. There's a safe spot here behind the barrels and two Fire Giant spawns. Pro tip. Rain to them as soon as they spawn to avoid them getting close enough to attack you. Red Dragons Yes, you can save spot Red Dragons. Head to Red Dragon Isle in the Wilderness. When you get there, you just need to find a dragon that's close to one of the lava streams, and range it from the opposite side. This is doable in several areas, just be careful of the other reds attacking you while you are safe spotting. Honorable Mentions Grey Wolves by the Wilderness Agility Course you can shoot down at the walls from either just outside the gate, no agility requirement, or from the ridge just past the gate, 52 agility required. I wouldn't count on the ridge working in Preservation or Vanilla, as ranging from a higher elevation doesn't seem to work well in either server. This might be a good change of senior if you're sick of arty dogs, and if you like to PK, you can take out agility trainers. Ogre Chieftains in Gutenoth. A friend tried it in official, and apparently it's good. I've never tried it, and this might be another one of those places you can't train in private servers because ranging from elevation doesn't work. But here are some pictures from official servers that prove it was possible. Be adventurous. If you're running out of spots that aren't boring and need something new, I can recommend two quest dungeons, Underground Pass and Legends. From what I recall, Underground Pass has some really good training spots for ranged, although you'll have to find your own safe spots. For Legends, I really have no idea, although I'm sure if you're curious enough and try hard, you'll find something worth bragging about. Overview of ranged items I'd like to go over the whole gamut of ranged equipment, ammo, and items. This will be a very basic overview of what ranged items exist in RSC and what they can do for you. For most of you, this will be a refresher. Equipment Back in the day, it was a common myth that the Amulet of Accuracy would increase your ranged accuracy. This was quickly disproven and became superstition, once players realized it didn't really impact range and only increased weapon aim, which bows didn't seem to adhere to. So what ranged equipment exists in RSC? To put it bluntly, other than weapons and ammunition, nothing. There are no dehyde van braces and traps, power amulet doesn't provide a range bonus since one doesn't exist, you get the gist. There are bows, arrows, crossbows, bolts, darts, throwing knives, spears, cannons, and cannonballs. That's about it. Leather bodies will always be the ranged meta, even in RC, but they do nothing better than provide a meager armor bonus. For these reasons, ranged outfits in RC are 100% fashionscape or defense focused. There is no concept of ranged defense as opposed to melee defense, they work the same. You'll take less hits from ranged by having a higher armor bonus, so equip plate armor and a large helmet. Weapons Short bows and long bows. There are short bows and long bows for each tree type. Short bows have a range of 5 tiles, long bows have a range of 6. You might think, wow, what a difference, but it actually does make a world of it, especially when you're training. Higher tier bows such as maple or yew can fire more powerful arrows. Oak can shoot steel, willow can shoot mithril, maple can shoot adamant, and yew can shoot rune. Magic apparently has no unlock, unless you believe in the whole bow accuracy theory. These bow types also require a higher range level to equip, with magic maxing out at 50. Crossbows there are two types of crossbows, normal ones and phoenix crossbows. A popular rumor was that phoenix crossbows were more accurate, but this has generally been proven otherwise. That being said, I totally drank that water even up until RC's close. From these weapons, you can fire normal crossbow bolts, which are slightly more damaging than bronze arrows, or oyster pearl bolts, which are equivalent to mithril arrows in damage. 
One advantage of using a crossbow, especially in free-to-play, was its one-handed nature. You could equip a shield and get some additional armor while firing. I always thought bolts were slightly less accurate than bronze arrows, but I really have no conclusive evidence of this. Darts. These members-only items are both ammo and a weapon, similar to the ones to follow. They're slightly less powerful than arrows, and as far as I could tell, have the exact same accuracy. They're stackable, just like arrows. The one cool thing about them is that they have no sprite when equipped, it just looks like you're empty-handed. Other than this gimmick, they really are pointless, as rune arrows are better in every single way. You can smith them or get most of them from strange barrels in the Legends Cave. Throwing Knives Another one-handed members-only ranged weapon, these ones are slightly more powerful than arrows. They aren't stackable, so each one takes an inventory slot. You can make them with a smithing skill, or try your hand at getting them as a drop from strange barrels. Spears Spears are the second most powerful ranged ammunition in the game, but they're also the hardest to obtain. They're also one-handed. Rune spears are three times as rare as shield left halves. If you have a rune spear in preservation or vanilla, I'm officially jealous. Cannon. This is the most powerful ranged weapon in the game, period. It costs 750k and you need to do the quest first. However, it hits really hard, with the max hit being 35 at 99 ranged. Of course, you need to make cannonballs to use it, which are a pain in the ass to get. Other items. The only ranged items that aren't considered weapons or ammunition are potions. If you can get your hands on a lot of them, I highly recommend using them for training after 50 to 60 ranged. Otherwise, save them for PKing or PVM. Getting arrows. Training range is easy. Getting the supplies needed for your desired ranged level, especially post 50, isn't. How do you get the massive amounts of arrows needed to eventually get to 70, 80, or 90 ranged? Plot twist. You don't have to. There are training spots that use tons of arrows that you won't be getting back. These offer some of the best experience per hour in the game. However, there are also spots that can be just as good, but allow you to pick up your arrows while you train. Realistically, even if you plan to pick up every arrow, you're still going to need at least 50 to 100k of them if you want to get all the way to 99, simply because some of your shots won't drop an arrow, and the number in your stockpile will decrease slowly over time. However, that's a lot better than the approximately 500k to 750k arrows you would need to get to 99 without picking them up. I'm really just guesstimating there, as I've never gotten to 99, but it will probably take hundreds of thousands to get there if you don't pick them up. Anyway, getting to the point of this section, how do you get arrows in RC? What are the best ways? Well, the easiest way is to buy them from shops. The shop in Catherby is amazing, and in this new age of RC private servers, where you can have as many alts as you want for free, it might behoove you to make an arrow buying alt. Anyway, you'll want to log on frequently and buy arrows as you play on your accounts. You'll need a lot of money to do this, of course, but assuming that's no object, just keep buying and buying. Other good shops include Lowe's Archery and Varrock, and the shop in the Combat Training Camp. Another option is to make the arrows yourself. You'll need to make a lot of bronze bars and smith them into arrowheads, then make a ton of arrow shafts, and... <laughs> yeah. You're gonna need thousands of feathers. My suggestion is to have alts at the two feather shops in Port Serum and Shantai Pass, and just keep logging in to buy them. Many RC players do this constantly, especially in preservation, so good luck getting some. If you can, at the same time, maybe have a pure account parked at a chicken coop to get strength experience and keep collecting feathers. Entrana is the best spot as it has the most chickens, six in total. Anyway, this option of making the arrows yourself is great because of the smithing, woodcutting, fletching, and combat experience you'll get along the way, if you can be patient enough. Finally, don't forget that you can always try buying ammunition from other players. Don't expect it to be too cheap though. I would guess bronze arrows probably run 10 to 15 GP each, but I really have no idea what the current market prices are. And if you're desperate enough, and no other options work, you can pick up arrows in the wilderness. Max hit. So, how high can ranged hit? We've gone over cannons in a previous section, so let's talk about arrows. Generally, the overall max hit with arrows is 19. This assumes you're level 99 ranged, you're using rune arrows, and you've sipped a range pot. Assuming a free-to-play setup with bronze arrows and no pot, the max hit is 15. Keep in mind that these numbers are from official servers. As of this recording, vanilla and preservation still have range damage slightly off, in that your max hit is anywhere from 1 to 3 levels higher. Additionally, here's a fun bronze arrow max hit table that I and others have trusted over the years. Again, it's from official. You might be wondering, what about spears? Good question! Rune spears were extremely rare in RC, and in official servers, their estimated cost was approximately 1 mil. Imagine having enough of them and being wealthy enough to casually throw them around. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. 
My best guess, after using Adamant Spear as a bit in official, is that the Rune Spear's max hit is somewhere around 3 or 4 damage points higher than Rune Arrows. If you're interested in seeing some ranged max hits, check out my testing range weaponry and max ranged hit check videos. Okay, maybe we should address the elephant in the room. Ranged accuracy. What determines whether we hit a 0 or some other number when we range something? For official servers, the TLDR is that we don't know. Some private servers have made assumptions and implemented ranged upon those, like OpenRC. Which brings me to the concept of ranged bonus. RSC doesn't have one, at least not one that is shown on the stat sheet. There was a great argument amongst the OpenRC devs whether there was a ranged bonus, similar to weapon aim, that was hidden from the player. While entirely plausible, I highly doubt this. What would be the reason for hiding it from the player? Ranged wasn't a new skill in Classic, it existed from the beginning. To think that ranged equipment, such as the shortbow or longbow, has had a bonus associated with it since the game's inception, but for almost three years, the stat interface was never updated to reflect this, is a bit bizarre. Yet, this very concept is how range was implemented in OpenRC servers, and how it works there today. It assumes that ranged weapons, not ammunition, affected your accuracy in the skill, other than leveling up in potions, of course. Despite that being how ranged accuracy works in RS2 and beyond, I still don't quite believe that's how it worked in RC. The premise that bronze and rune arrows had the same armor penetration goes against everything I believe and have seen. Regardless, range accuracy is still a mystery to us. I really hope you guys enjoyed this guide and learned something new about the range skill. Big props to my friend Zaguli, who is basically a ranged expert. So, what did I miss? Please light up the comments with your favorite spots for training ranged, if you're willing to release that information, of course. Until next time.